Welcome in, everybody, to Betting Pros. It's time to place your bets. It is me, Joey P, Joe P. Zapia, and it's time to look ahead to Week 15 in the NFL. And uh, to sum up Week 14, uh, the GOAT lost to Mr. Irrelevant. Every single quarterback uh, seems to be concussed or in the blue tent. And, uh, yeah, uh, Jerry Judy caught three touchdowns. So if you had that on your bingo card, I'm sure it was a fun day for you all. But, obviously, a lot to get to. A lot of injuries, a lot of changes. We've also broken a record for most quarterbacks in a single season in the NFL that are going to be starting for respective NFL teams. And not in a strike year, mind you. This is regular old football with the 32 teams that we have. So there you go. Lots of history being made. And hopefully my friends here will help us make some more. Matthew Friedman, Pat Fitzmorris joining me as always here on Betting Pros. And gentlemen, I know it was a, a long Sunday with lots of winding rows, a few upsets in between. Before we get to looking ahead and turning the page on week 14, we've got one more game left. It's Monday Night Football, so let's get after it here. It's the New England Patriots and the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Arizona, obviously, uh, a team that has struggled to get out of their own way at times in 2022. We know that. The Patriots, you could say the same, certainly offensively, having some issues. Yesterday, this number was one and a half. Today, it is two. So it has moved a little bit here. Of course, New England favored by two on the road. 43 and a half is the number, plus 110 on the money line if you like the Arizona Cardinals. Matthew Friedman, we'll start with you. When it comes to Monday Night Football, which way are you leaning? I have no faith in anything at this point in my ability to analyze any games after what happened last week, but I have this at 0.75. So I see value on uh, Arizona. And of course the line has moved against me, which is pretty par for what happened in week 14. I just want to bury week 14 and not even think mm. about Monday night football. Sounds a lot like me last week. I can yeah. tell you last Monday, I was salty Joe. Oh my goodness. I was not happy to be here. It was tough. This week was better. Uh, had a lot of Jalen Hurts and Miles Sanders and DFS. That's a story for another time. But that Pat helps. Morris, it did help. <laughs> as soon as I saw the weather change and stuff, I was like, you know, it was like lots of running the football today. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Pat Fitzmorris, uh, all that aside, looking ahead here, there has been slight movement, not too much. Jacoby Myers out for this game tonight. We know he will not be participating. We know how bad the uh, Arizona Cardinals are against tight ends. I know today later on the Monday Night Football live stream at 3.30 Eastern. Bogman and I are going to talk. The thing I'm going to be in on this game, it's not the lines, it's not the over-under, it's the Hunter Henry anytime touchdown score. That's the only thing I want to bet, and I want to bet it hard. How about, how about that? Can we agree on that today? <laughs> yeah, understandably, I think the Cardinals have given up the most receiving yards, most receptions, most touchdowns, uh, pretty much most everything to uh, the tight end position. So, they're very generous in the holiday mm -hmm. season, and Hunter Henry is probably going to enjoy his presence tonight. Yeah, I, I'm still trying to wrap my mind around that quarterback stat, too. I mean, Baker Mayfield on Thursday night kind of set the tone for what was going to be a very strange uh, week 14, if you think about it. Looking back now, it seems like ages ago that that game happened, but it wasn't. It was only Thursday. All right, let's turn the page here. And as always on the program, we're brought to you by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. Download the BetMGM app today. And don't forget the Daily Juice every single day is there for you for all your betting information. Let's kick things off here on another Thursday, this coming Thursday, where Brock Purdy uh, continues to lead the San Francisco 49ers to wins. Uh, and here we go, 9-4. and four, The 49ers are three-and-a-half-point favorites on the road against Seattle. Seattle dropping a tough one there to Carolina. I talked about it a lot on Sunday of this being a dangerous game here for Seattle to not to uh, to get too ahead of themselves here. And they did. And a couple mistakes later, they were on the losing end. So they are home dogs here in this game. Forty three and a half is the number. If you like Seattle to win this game, plus one sixty. So, Pat, let's start with you on this one. Thursday night football, short week, a lot of workload for Christian McCaffrey. That's not surprising. Is a short week kind of the best medicine, though? For the Seattle Seahawks team after dropping a game at home to have another shot here. Maybe they were caught looking ahead. Yeah, I don't know if it's the best remedy, Joe. I, like one of the nice stories early in the season, one of the surprises, I think, was the play of the Seattle defense, which we expected to be complete trash this year and really wasn't. But over their last four games, the Seahawks have given up 21 to the Buccaneers, who obviously are having their issues on offense, 40 to the Raiders, 23 to the Rams and 30 to Sam Darnold and the Seahawks. So this defense, uh, once a very pleasant surprise, is now playing down to expectations. So um, like the first impression, of, I saw this line and it's like, wow, they're really not docking the 49ers for having Brock Purdy at quarterback that much. 
Um, but the more I looked at it and the way things have kind of been trending for the Seahawks defensively, I'm wondering if this is, uh, you know, enough points. Like I've, I've got it at four and a half rather than three and a half. And I kind of like the over here a bit too. Um, like Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy are making this thing work. And, uh, you know, it's humming. Maybe it'll continue to hum even without Debo. They've still got Christian McCaffrey, who has in fact been all world. Uh, mm-hmm. Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle. The offensive line has been fantastic. So uh, maybe they keep it going. And, and Seattle, I just don't like how their season is sort of trending, especially on the defensive side of the ball. It would be shocking to see Debo play in this game after that injury, that's for sure. So I think we can, you know, before we get all the information, I think we kind of rule him out for this one. But uh, it is a short week for McCaffrey, who's had back-to-back really big workloads. It's a great matchup here on paper for him against the Seattle defense, Friedman. What are your thoughts about this matchup here? Is there any value looking ahead early and betting it now? I don't know. I'm the bitter old man who bet Seattle in the look-ahead market at plus one and a half. So I hate myself right now. Wow. And wow. And the thing is, I uh, I can't I'm a, I haven't adjusted Seattle enough, but I have this at one point seven five, and it's taking into account no Debo Samuel. Uh, it's taking into account that uh, Brock Purdy is not Jimmy Garoppolo. Like I do not care how good he has looked the past two games, he is still not Jimmy Garoppolo. Like this number was one and a half in the look ahead market. I I don't see two points of difference from what we saw this weekend. Like Seattle still looks good. Uh, Sorry. Seattle looks bad on defense, but good Mm -hmm. enough on offense. And San Francisco's defense is awesome. I don't know. I'm just, I I haven't adjusted enough. Like I just know I'm going to need to go back in. I'm probably not downrating the Seattle defense enough. Like I just generally have this perspective of defense doesn't matter all that much unless your defense is just really, really bad. And maybe they're really, really bad, and I haven't totally accepted that yet. But this this number feels too high. That said, I know my number of 1.75 is too low. I just I know it's too low. It's a lot of affirmations this morning for you. This is this is really something. I think we should all I am you know, extremely go out to tilted. The woods. I, you know, I think we should do. I should take all your bet slips. We'll go out. We'll light the fire pit. We'll do some chanting, and we'll just kind of burn them all. Do some ritualistic healing kind of chanting, and then and then we'll move on to week fifteen. It's okay for you, man. We, we can leave the past in the past. We don't have to bring this, it with I, us. Here. I just I gotta say this one point five. It's it's going to it's gonna haunt me. This is going to be the <laughs> worst bet all year that I have because this line could continue to move to San Francisco. It would not surprise me if this got to like six. It would not surprise me either, to be honest. Uh, Serenity now. I think that is the best uh, possible chant for you to continue on with. Uh, then we've got Saturday football, everybody. Yay! I like Saturday games. we got the trio of games, starting with the Indianapolis Colts going against the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings throwing for 5,000 yards in that game against the Lions is still coming up short somehow. Uh, they are four and a half point favorites against the Colts, though. So, uh, yes, these are always those tricky games here, though, with Minnesota where – This is a game they should win. This is a game they should get back on track. And we always know those seem to be the most tenuous for this team. 47 and a half is the number plus 180 if you like the Colts. But I got to say, I'm looking for Minnesota to handle their business as trappy and dangerous as that field. Friedman, when you're looking ahead at this line here at the four and a half, uh, where did you have it in your model? I'm curious. Did you have this right on the button or did you have Minnesota favored by more? Uh, this is terrible. I again, hate myself. Uh, I have this at 2.75. I haven't bet it though. Cause I just, I know, I know I need to make some more adjustments on this because I like, I do not have any faith in the Colts that said the market seriously downgraded the, uh, the Vikings after what we saw this past week. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, they are, I don't want to say fraudulent, but um, they looked they looked bad. They just they looked bad. And they had a lot of empty yardage, like a lot of calories without any protein mm-hmm. in it. And um, I don't know. I, I don't have any faith in the Colts being able to exploit that. But I certainly don't have any faith in the Vikings at four and a half. All right. Uh, how about you, Pat? When you're looking ahead to this kickoff on Saturday, do you think that uh, 47 and a half is tantalizing? You think the uh, Minnesota Vikings, maybe four and a half is too much? On them, what do you think? I'll say fraudulent. I don't mind using that word. Um, I've kind of been using it for a while, and now the Vikings have actually been outscored by their opponents this season collectively, which, uh, you know, belied by their 10-3 and record. Yeah, the Colts, though, 
they've won one of their last seven games. And, uh, you know, like any hope of a, a bounce from Jeff Saturday, I, I think, you know, that's kind of looking like a mirage after that Raiders, mm-hmm. that unexpected win against the Raiders a few weeks ago. Um, yes, the Vikings did get exposed to some degree in Detroit, but this line feels even more respect disrespectful towards the Vikings than I thought that Detroit line seemed. But that Detroit line turned out to be right. I just... I don't know if I can give the Colts the same sort of respect I have for the Lions, who at least we know can score. Like, I am i don't think anyone is intimidated by this Colts offense. Um, and I do have a little inclination about the over here, Joe. There have been 49 or more points scored in four of the Vikings' last six games. Uh, this mm-hmm. does feel like an over spot. All right. Uh, Baltimore and Cleveland is the 430 Eastern game on the Saturday slate. Uh, Cleveland... Uh, looking better, uh, I think, <laughs> than they did in week 13. Again, the bar was set very low. The Baltimore Ravens perhaps down another quarterback because now Tyler Huntley was down a uh, short week. We'll see if Lamar is healthy enough to play. We don't know yet. But right now, it stands that the Baltimore Ravens are two and a half point underdogs going to Cleveland, which feels about right to me, Pat. Um, I don't know if by Saturday, you know, where we're going to be at with this quarterback situation. They did get J.K. Dobbins back. The number's 39 and a half. It's a low total to begin with here. Plus 120 if you like Baltimore for the upset. To me, you either go right to the plus 120 and you bet that or you bet the under and you stay away from this spread. I don't think that's the the way to make money on this game. But, Pat, how do you see it? Yeah, um, I think that's it, Joe. Like, what kind of position do we want to stake out with Lamar Jackson here? And I kind of want to stake out... I mean, I feel like if Lamar is not playing, this should be more like three, three and a half uh, for the Browns. And if Lamar was playing, like I think the the Ravens should be favored by like a field goal or close to it. So I kind of want to take that position just in case Lamar comes back this week and feel like I'm getting a lot of value and and maybe take it with the points. Uh, But you make a compelling case about taking the money line too, Joe. Like Mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson was a little bit better in his second start, but still really inefficient. Yeah, we've cut. We've kind of seen this Browns running game go belly up in the last three or four weeks, like real quietly. It has not been working as well as it had throughout the season. Uh, I guess the people who have Nick Chubb in in fantasy can attest to that. Um, Cleveland's 27th in defensive DVOA. So maybe even if it is Tyler Huntley or uh, oh, I forgot the name of the third stringer. Anthony Brown. Just, Anthony Brown. Anthony Brown. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, maybe they, can, maybe they can move <laughs> it a little on Cleveland, even if they lose their first two quarterbacks for this one. And uh, hidden advantage for the Ravens here. They're first in DVOA on special teams. That unit's been giving them like a, this little sneaky advantage all year. So I kind of like the Ravens here. Um, want to grab it and cross my fingers that Lamar comes back and all of a sudden this bet looks terrific. Uh, Friedman, I'm jumping on the plus 120 here. Uh, I'm jumping on it right now. Uh, if you get Huntley back, if you get Lamar back, those are two possibilities there where I think Baltimore immediately becomes the team to win this football game. Uh, just a much better defensive unit too. The Browns are lackadaisical on defense. The tackling sometimes is the effort level. It's just not there. Uh, what do you think about this line too? Maybe you see it differently. Yeah, I do see it differently, and that's even with a pretty significant downgrade, largest downgrade on the week for the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I'm just super skeptical now of what we've seen out of them two straight weeks, and I would assume that Deshaun Watson, you know, kind of like quote unquote, continues to improve and shake off the rust. But like, it's not as if this offense is going to be anything close to what you know the most optimistic Browns fans would have hoped with Deshaun Watson mm-hmm. at quarterback. Uh, that said, I still have this projected at four, uh, but that is assuming no Lamar Jackson, and I think. I don't know. I think that's more of a safe assumption than not given the estimated timeline. And given that it's still a shorter week, I think there is a chance that we see uh, Huntley return uh, for this game. Like I think he's in the concussion protocol, but that doesn't mean he actually had a concussion. And it seemed Mm -hmm. like that was kind of like the way it was being phrased after the, uh, after the game. So I I'm assuming that there's a decent chance he actually plays in this game. But that said, I still think there's a pretty significant drop from Lamar Jackson to Huntley. I think that's like at least four points, maybe five points. So uh, even if you take that into account, uh, if Lamar Jackson plays, I believe you guys are right. The the Ravens, no doubt, should be favored in this game if Jackson plays, but I just don't think he's going to play. 
All right. Uh, I, I still think even with Huntley that the Ravens are going to find a way to win this football game, especially on defense. So uh, screw the numbers. Give me the money line here. Just win outright. Just just win, baby. In the words of Al Davis, night game, Saturday night fever for Buffalo in Buffalo. It's going to be cold in Buffalo on a Saturday night in December. Miami's going to travel there. Tyree kills ankle got injured. He was icing it, then he was running on it as best he could. He was still able to dance, so we're not exactly sure what uh, the status is today of that ankle. But they are seven-point underdogs heading to Buffalo, probably as they should be. The Buffalo Bills continue to kind of scratch and claw their way to victories. Not always the prettiest of victories, but victories nonetheless in what's become a very competitive AFC East. 45 and a half is the number, plus 250 on the money line for the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins lost two in a row here. Uh, Friedman, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think Miami's finally gotten figured out because it looked like they were really forcing Tua to do some things that he wasn't comfortable with yesterday, and it might be a signal where people are starting to pick up on the tendencies and game planning against Tua because he was not sharp yesterday. Yeah, I think that might have been part of it. You know, they're also without their right tackle, uh, Austin Jackson. They did have left tackle Teron Armstead come back, but they're not healthy on the offensive line or like optimally healthy on the offensive mm -hmm. line and, you know, injured Tyreek. Yeah, I think there is part of it. And there is just a significant difference between Tua at home and Tua on the road. And, you know, now again, we see Tua on the road. And I think this is like, is this the third straight game uh, that we have the Dolphins on the road? Uh, and so it's it's not an optimal. Well, two in a row he was on the West Coast. So that was that's for sure. So, yeah, this might be three straight road games. You're right. Yeah, so it's not an optimal situation uh, for the Dolphins with the travel, especially going into the cold. I have this at 7.75, so I'm pretty close to the line here of 7. I, I haven't bet it yet. If I were to take a side, it would probably be Buffalo. That said, like they have not been able to close out games against the spread. You know, like they've they've won games, but they haven't been mm -hmm. winning with margin. And so I think this line is probably where it should be. Great point there by Friedman, Pat, about the margin perhaps being a little too big. Do you see that possibly being the case here where you're comfortable Buffalo gets the W, but the seven's a little bit too big of a number? Yeah, that's kind of where I am, too. I mean, for a team as offensively potent as the Dolphins, seven does seem like a lot of lumber at first glance, <laughs> especially when you consider that the Dolphins beat the Bills 20 to 21 to 19 uh, back in week three. But then you look at that game a little more closely and the Bills outgained the Dolphins 497 yards to 212. Uh, but, you know, Josh Allen, despite throwing for 400 yards and two touchdowns, he was sacked four times and lost a fumble. So Miami just kind of hung around on that game, uh, in that game, and, and pulled out the win. It wasn't really kind of an impressive uh, game where they outplayed the Bills. So I don't know. I, I'm with Friedman. It seems like there's not much value on either, you know, either with the spread or the total here. All right. Uh, before we move to the Sunday games, just a reminder, everybody, if you're watching on the YouTube channel and you should subscribe to the YouTube channel, because if you haven't already, we're giving away an Isaiah McKenzie Buffalo Bills mini helmet. So it's the time to do that. It's autographed. Thanks to our friends at pristineauction.com. So subscribe to the betting pros channel, drop a comment uh, in the video in the little comments section there on the YouTube. That's it. That's all you got to do. And click that little bell till it goes ding. So you get the notifications if you're the big winner. And of course, every time a piece of content drops. So very easy. Subscribe, comment, like the like the video. Very easy things to do. And the Isaiah McKenzie helmet can be yours. Let's kick things off here on Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern. Carolina Panthers coming off a victory. Pittsburgh Steelers coming off a loss at home to the Ravens. The Panthers are two and a half point underdogs at home to the Steelers, which feels about right. 40 is the number. If you like the Panthers to keep the train rolling with Sam Darnold, well, it's plus 118 on the money line for them. So obviously the injury to Kenny Pickett yesterday, uh, we had to see Mitchell Trubisky play football again, Pat, and that's never something I like to do. Uh, but regardless, that's where we're at. Uh, yet another injury at the quarterback position last week. So do you see any early value when you look at this game between Carolina and Pittsburgh? Because I know a lot of people see this game, want to run right past it. But should they? Should they spend a little bit more time on? Actually, it? I just I want to jump in really quick as a point of order. Uh, the Panthers are now favored in this game. Uh, favored by oh, two uh, and my a half. It, it's flipped. It was two and a half, and it flipped. That yeah. is my apology. Thank you very much, Freeman. I was pulling up, looking at the sheet number instead of the betting pros number. Usually, I do both back to back there. I did not because I was doing reads, trying to give people helmets. <laughs> I just want to give people things. It's the Christmas season. Uh, but yes, thank you very much. So. Let's reassess this. My apologies. Minus two and a half on the Carolina Panthers side. It's flipped. 
I guess the new question is, is that a little bit of an overreaction here, Fitz? No, um, that's kind of the way I see it too. Um, and, and maybe, you know, like I've got it at, uh, well, maybe a little bit. So I've got it as uh, Pittsburgh, what? Uh, yeah, Pittsburgh by one and a half. Okay. No, anyway, and so Pittsburgh is now plus 112 on the money line, and the number two uh, sure. went from 40 to 38 and a half. That has also moved uh, in the last 24 hours. All right. So wait, wait. Sorry, what is what do we have this at on betting pros right now? Uh, what happens is Matthew Friedman is going to play quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I'm going to play quarterback for the Panthers, and it's uh, minus 17 that uh, Friedman wins. That's what's going to be. Uh, no, what's going on in betting pros? The new consensus is Carolina, two and a half point favorites at home, 38 and a half is the over under, plus 112 for the Pittsburgh Steelers to win, if you like that. Yeah, so I think there's a little bit of value maybe on Pittsburgh now. It seems like even if Trubisky plays, like, do we really think Trubisky is a significant drop off from Pickett? I think it's pretty much uh, a, a mm. lateral move there. Um, and the Steelers have won their last two road games. You know, they haven't taken care of world beater teams. They beat the Colts and the Falcons, uh, but they also did knock off the Bengals in Cincinnati in week one. So they've shown the uh, ability to go out on the road and, and put a good game together. Um you know, I would have liked the under at this opening line, but uh, now I see that it's moved down a little bit. I mean, both of these teams are better on defense than they are on offense. Um, you know, the, the Steelers 21st in offensive DVOA, 13th on defense, Panthers 30th on offense, 21st on defense. So uh, I, I do think this one is probably going to stay under, but. You know, if it's uh, 38 and a half as it was on DraftKings this morning or 39, I don't know if there's a great deal of value there either. So, um, you know, no strong feelings on this one for me. All right. Friedman, any strong feelings on you as this line has flipped in the last 24 hours? Yeah, on the total, I have it projected at 38.1. So, I, you know, I guess in theory, a little bit of value there. Uh, but I have it at Pickham. And that's, you know, with the assumption that Kenny Pickett is – I don't know, like a point, a point and a half better than Mitch Trubisky, which I don't think we can make that assumption, but that's still, uh, you know, trying to make the assumption and assuming we see Trubisky in this game, I still have this as a pick em. So I think that there's value here on the, the Steelers, uh, you know, who historically have done well as underdogs. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next game here, the Philadelphia Eagles were favored by eight against Chicago yesterday. That number has now moved this morning to nine. So another change there. 49 is the number in the over-under game, and then plus 320 on the money line for the Chicago Bears. Uh, this one obviously in Chicago here. The Eagles look like the, uh, the creme de la creme of the NFC right now, which, again, the bar might be set a little lower with some of these teams and the way they played in recent weeks. Uh, but you got to give a lot of credit to Jalen Hurts. They are 12-1. and one. They are absolutely crushing things right now is this another game here Friedman where they just literally run over their opponent maybe the I mean the one area where that defense for the the Eagles is weak is against the run and mm. you know with Jalen uh sorry with uh Justin Fields uh you know presumably healthy coming out of the bye that is the one area where the Browns sorry the Bears might be able to exploit uh it's this, week 15 everybody I, I know we're just I know. lucky it's we're rugged. all here you it's know rugged. this is this is what happens it's been look the holidays come these things are going on we're just trying to do the podcast to the best of our abilities today that's yeah. where we're at I mean the three cups of coffee like this is where we're at here guys. survive right. and, survive and maybe thrive but just survive, survive in advance I think yeah it's clear <laughs> it's it's uh but this this number is at nine I have it at seven and a half so in theory there's some value here on Chicago but like the difference between seven and a half and nine isn't massive but you know with Justin Fields like there's I don't know. He's always got the ability, I think, because of his his rushing uh, capability to cover. Uh, but the real thing here is the over. Like the Bears are just a dead over team. And unless there is any weather issues, I think that's the only thing that would give me pause with, OK, wind, Chicago, December, you know, like potential for uh, any type of like inclement elements that might put this to the under. But uh, if not anything like that, uh, I think this is over here. Uh, 48 and a half, I think, is the number. And I've got it projected mm -hmm. more like uh, closer to 50. I, Pat, I, with these kind of games, I always worry about the letdown. Like it was a big game against the Giants, in division opponent. You know, you're getting up for those games. And then you're getting on the road going to Chicago and a team who are like, yeah, we're way better than the Bears. And those are always the trappy spots. Now, to the Eagles' credit, they have maneuvered through some of these. 
They've also fallen prey to one of them against the Washington Commanders once. We were kind of looking ahead a little bit too much, not taking another team seriously. Perhaps that was the best thing that could happen to them because I think it was a bit of a lesson. That being said, Justin Fields, as Friedman pointed out, I mean, he's a special player capable of doing special things. Is the nine a tricky number where maybe we like the side of the Bears on this one, especially because there's a chance that as the week goes on, the MVP chatter continues for Jalen Hurts. This number grows to 10. No, I disagree with Friedman on this one. I think it should be nine and a half. And I I looked at that and immediately wondered whether that was enough, whether the Eagles should be favored by double digits here, even though it's on the okay. road. Uh, I don't think we're going to see a letdown. The commanders actually have a good defense. The Bears do not have a good defense. I mean, this is a really, really bad defense. They're 32nd dead last in defensive DVOA. The Bears have lost six straight. And in those six games, they have given up 49, 35, 31, 27, 31, and 28 points. They are getting torched, blow torched every week. And now they are facing an absolute juggernaut of an offense that can cut you up on the ground or through the air. So I love the over here and I like the Eagles uh, to cover the big number. I'm with Pat. I think the over is the one I'm looking for the most here. 49 in the over. I'm going to take that for sure, especially with Fields back healthy. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs, which should be an absolute crush here. They are 14-point favorites against the Houston Texans. Houston Texans did show up, though, uh, last week with multiple quarterbacks. Again, lots of quarterbacks playing. There's a theme here going on in the NFL. It's like Jimmy gets a play, a chance to play. Johnny gets a chance to play. Everybody gets a chance to play quarterback. It's fun. Uh, so, the Houston Texans obviously is still a one win team regardless. This should be a crush. We all believe that 47 is the number. Uh, it is plus 575 for the Houston Texans to upset the Chiefs. Pat, look, we all know what the calculus of this game is. The question is, can the Kansas City Chiefs cover this 14 or do they continue to let teams hang around in games too long? Because it seems to be an awkward trend the last few weeks. Yeah, while I'm not as tilted as Friedman is this morning, I'm plenty tilted about the Chiefs-Broncos game, which Friedman and I were on the opposite ends of yesterday. And, uh, you know, I I still think I was on the right side of that one, or at least I did when the Chiefs went up 27 nothing. But Kansas City has crushed me as a big favorite many times in the past, and I keep going back to that well for some stupid reason I can't explain. So... I am refusing to bet the Chiefs is a big favorite again. I'm just going to turn my nose up at this game and walk away. And I think we've seen the folly of like the big spread, like picking on Houston uh, with them darn near knocking off the Cowboys straight up in Dallas yesterday. Like I'm not going to jump on any more of these spreads that, you know, treat it like an SEC non-conference game where it's Georgia going up against Youngstown State. Like Houston <laughs> is not Youngstown State. Uh, you know, they can hang – with a professional football team here. So I no interest in this game whatsoever, not even in the total. All right, Friedman, you're smirking. Does that mean you have interest or you agree with Pat? Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything that Pat said, and I'm still the moron who bet this at KC minus 14. <laughs> and and like, I know, I know, I know that the Chiefs do not historically cover as big favorites. The thing <sighs> is, I, I bet this in the look ahead market under this theory. Whatever happened in week 14, there was no chance this number was going under 14, but there was a chance that it would go up. If if the Texans got blown out, if the Chiefs blew out the Broncos, this number could have opened at 17. And so that's why I bet it. I have it projected right now at 15.25. So, you know, in theory, I think it should be above 14. I don't see it getting below 14 even now. I don't see Texans money coming in because that just does not exist. But there could be there could be action that drives this number up. Okay. Uh, next can, one on this. Okay. Can I make a, sorry. Sure. Uh, Two quick follow-up points. I'm going to make one really slow follow-up point I forgot to make about the Bears game. Uh, I, I did check the weather, Friedman, since I'm here in the Chicago area. And uh, for next Sunday, it's looking partly cloudy, high of 30 degrees. So weather, you know, a little chilly, but really not a factor unless there's a lot of wind. So um, as for the Texans, maybe I'm interested in betting the under here. The Texans haven't had a game go over 47 points uh, since week seven since they got blown out by the Raiders. So um, they've been kind of an under team lately, or at least an under team to a number this big. And, uh, you know, maybe they can pull the Chiefs into a mud wrestling match. 
Here's one thing I will say quickly about this. We have the Chiefs uh, playing their fourth game on the road out of their past five games, which is just sort of like a killer stretch, but they're in a dome. And like Mahomes in a dome has historically just dominated. So yes, like that, that is, is that is one of the things that like <laughs> gives me some hope of them covering the larger number. And never, right. mind what, never mind what I said about the under. I forgot about the domes, dome factor with Mahomes. <laughs> so, uh, forget I said anything. Pay me no mind. Patrick Mahomes. Uh, let's go to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, this line has moved, too. Yesterday it was six and a half. But after uh, Trevor Lawrence's uh, stunning performance there in the upset against Tennessee, gritty, gutty performance, uh, now it's moved to five. So, they are five-point underdogs against the Dallas Cowboys heading to town. 46 and a half is the number, plus 190 on the money line. I got to tell you, Friedman, uh, if there was ever a spot here where I was looking for what the upset is of the week, and I wanted to put uh, a nice chunk of chains on the uh, plus 190 that I'm getting right now on the consensus line of betting pros on the Jacksonville Jaguars to win a game, I like this one. Trayvon Walker getting to the quarterback. Trevor Lawrence looking really sharp here. Um, the Dallas Cowboys uh, looking odd. I would say yesterday in the, in that game in terms of um, making mistakes at times, it, you know, the Cowboys are a weird team because as good as they can look on certain plays, as bad as they can look on some others. And that's, and that's kind of the enigma that is the Cowboys. And if you have too many of the latter, you put yourself in danger of losing football games. What do you think of this line right there? Is this a giant trap? Uh, no, I mean, I have it projected at six, but the thing is, I know that there is a wide range of outcomes here based on the injuries that the Cowboys have incurred. And so yeah. the, the Jags are pretty healthy. Uh, Trevon Walker did have an ankle injury in week 14. So that is something to monitor, but it, it doesn't seem as if that's hugely serious. And he's the only player really for that team. Uh, who's dealing with some injury issues. The Cowboys are without two of their starting cornerbacks and maybe a third because Trevon Diggs uh, is dealing with a thumb injury. Right tackle Terrence Steele looks like he's dealing with a potentially serious, uh, potentially like season-ending leg injury. Uh, number two tight end Jake Ferguson, who actually gets some decent run in that offense in two tight end sets, he's dealing with a concussion. Like uh, This is not a healthy Cowboys team right now. And so it would not surprise me if we saw this line continue to move towards the Jags. Fitz, do you want to get in early before this line continues to move maybe towards Jacksonville? I do, Joe. Um, I love looking at this line and uh, seeing the possibility of betting against Mike McCarthy as a road favorite. Like, I'm really anxious to make that bet. There are not a lot of li games that I love. I really like this game because I want to make that bet. I know it's not foolproof. I mean, Dallas can be really tough, but we have seen Trevor Lawrence really turn a corner in recent weeks. Like he has gone five games without an interception. And, uh, you know, based on what we saw from him last year, that would have seemed almost inconceivable. Um, <laughs> and he's going to be tested. He's got the Cowboys this week and then the Jets the following week. But as Friedman said, the Cowboys really have some key injuries in their secondary. So I don't know if this is the same sort of Cowboys pass defense we've been seeing for most of the season. So I do like Jacksonville. I think I'm going to take the points and probably put a money line bet down on this one. And I like the over here. Uh, the last three Jaguars games have produced 55, 54 and 58 points. Their opponents for two of those games were the Ravens and Titans. So it's not like... Uh, those are really shootout style teams. And yet the Jaguars have sort of accelerated the pace with uh, even some pretty good defensive teams. Week 15 means the debut of another quarterback. Desmond Ritter is going to get his start here in the NFL. His first one as a rookie. Uh, this number was three and a half uh, on the side of the New Orleans Saints coming into yesterday. Today, it is now four. So uh, the New Orleans Saints are four point home favorites, which uh, I got to tell you, I am not a fan of the Saints, Pat. I feel no... Uh, comfort in them whatsoever. Uh, 43 is the number here on this one. If you like Atlanta, a plus 170 in the money line. But uh, I, I always feel like the expectations in that first game for a quarterback, typically it's that first game you want them before there's more tape on them and you know what they're trying to do. He's had a whole extra week to prepare. I think Atlanta could possibly hang in this game, dare I say, even win it. So I'm on the Atlanta side of this game personally, and I know a lot of people automatically like to fade the rookie at his first start, but to me, that's where you jump on him. That's where the value is. And it's the second and third start where then you start to know what's going on with that guy, and then you can start to game plan pretty well and stop the tendencies. What do you think, though, about Atlanta and New Orleans? 
I got to say, Joe, the Saints have been one of my more successful betting teams. I've sort of wavered and been able to catch them at the right time, but I don't feel like I know where they are at right now. So I'm kind of not eager to keep going back to the well on the Saints. Um, and I've got this at Saints minus four. So I don't see any real value here based on my product projection. I do see value on the under and um, part of it, the quarterback situation. Um, you know, the Falcons have a rookie quarterback making his first start. The Saints have scored 16 or fewer games in, or 16 or fewer points in four of their last five games. So their offense not exactly hitting on all cylinders either. And, you know, this this rookie quarterback who really not regarded as a lights out passing prospect. So, um, you know, this when they played in week one, there were 53 points scored. Saints beat the Falcons 27-26, but that was a much different game. Uh, Jameis Winston threw two touchdown passes to Michael Thomas for the Saints in that game. So um, totally different quarterbacks now. Uh, I, I sort of like the under in this one in a game where, you know, a rookie quarterback against a struggling offense. Friedman, uh, your thoughts here on Desmond Ritter's debut and any confidence whatsoever in the Saints, who are now 4-9, and nine, by the way. Well, to to Fitz's point, the line here has been kind of interesting. Uh, it opened at 41 and a half last night. It's been bet up all the way to, well, I mean, all the way to 43, but it's it's moved up a little bit. And so at that number of 43, I probably would be interested, like Fitz, in, in taking the under here. Um, ah, man, I, I like the Saints here. It, it feels, it feels uh, wrong because the Saints have been really bad this year. Uh, and the strength of the team, or what was supposed to be the strength of the team, their defense has been really inconsistent. But, you know, Joe, to your point of the Falcons having the bye, the Saints are also coming off of the bye as well. And they were starting to get healthy entering the bye. And so there's a chance that Marshawn Lattimore returns for this game, uh, safety PJ Williams. Like, there's a chance they could be like their fully functional, healthy self on defense coming out of the bye. And if that's the case, I really want to take them against the Falcons. So I have this projected at five. All right. Uh, next game here, the Detroit Lions are on fire, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. The Detroit Lions. They're going to go play the New York Jets next. Now, look, they have won two in a row. Uh, they probably, you could argue, should have won three in a row because they should have won that game on Thanksgiving Day. It was in their grasp not once but twice. Uh, they did not, but... They have got a ton of weapons. Everybody's catching balls. Penny Sewell caught a ball yesterday, boys and girls. That's how crazy things got in Detroit. Uh, they are basically at a pick em here with the Jets. Mike White uh, and company, they are minus one point favorites at home. Uh, Friedman, it felt, and this is an older reference here, but it felt like shades of Willis Reed coming back and Mike White coming back for the injury. I thought for a second he might lead them to a victory there as he stumbled onto the field, but it was not meant to be. The Jets obviously are a much different team here with decent quarterback play. Joe Flacco, not that answer. 46 and a half is the number. You're getting minus 110 on both these teams in the money line. So you kind of have at it right now. Because it's so close, is there any value at all to be had on this game? Uh, I think so. I think this line continues to move. Uh, this is like one of the few uh, look ahead bets that I made that actually turned out well for me. So maybe it means that it's, it's going to be horrible. Everything's in, coming in up actual, Friedman today. In the yeah. actual way that this game plays out. But uh, the Lions... I have this at a pick them, uh, and I think this line will ultimately move and that they will be favored by the time we see this game kick off. Uh, you know, Mike White dealing with the ribs uh, injuries, like multiple shots where it's like, wow, how is he How is he still in the game? Uh, and ultimately, mm -hmm. Joe Flacco is playing. It wouldn't be a surprise if we did see Flacco play. I mean, I, I think we see Mike White, but I think we see him in that sort of like – it's like the Tony Romo situation from a decade ago where he was like playing through the ribs injuries and he's got like the extra padding that you know kind of immobilizes him. I could see uh, like as as statuesque as Mike White kind of already is a, an even more statuesque version of him who's just totally unable to navigate the pocket. Uh, Detroit, their defense is getting better uh, recently and um, – yeah, I, their offense, like with Amon Ross St. Brown there and like Jared Goff is like maybe the hashtag future for <laughs> for the quarterback position there for for the Detroit Lions, which is kind of amazing. Yeah, I, I have I have it to pick them. But if I had to lean in a direction in terms of how I would project it, I would have the Lions favored. 
Now, that all being said, as good as Mahomes is in the dome, is as bad as Jared Goff sometimes is outside. I like to call him an outside cat. That's what Jared Goff, he's, I'm sorry, he's an indoor cat, Jared Goff. That's what he is. He's the indoor cat. You don't want him to go outside. He doesn't do well out there. He's got a ton of options, though. Now, Jameson Williams is healthy. He's got Amon Ra. He's got DJ Chark. He's got all these weapons here. Seems like a lot for the Jets to handle, but we keep saying that the Jets keep shutting down offenses left and right fits what do you make of this game here because this seems like one of the trickier ones on the slate quite the contrast with the lions having averaged 32.2 points over their last five games and the jets having allowed 15.8 points since week five so uh you know do we see the lions sort of turn this into the shootout they're comfortable playing do we see the jets pull the lions down and, and turn this into you know a uh a rock fights so i don't know i'm on the opposite side of friedman here i actually think the jets should be favored by two and a half and i don't know i've been sort of a sucker for the jets all year maybe it's uh just pandering to uh our, our buddy tom viola former host of the sunday morning <laughs> betting pros live stream um but going into week 14 the jets ranked ninth in overall dvoa and the lions ranked 13th like you know straight up uh impartial measure Jets deem to be the better team. So why would they uh, be an underdog at home to the Lions or just a one point favor? Like, I think there's a little bit of value with the Jets and there's no real drop off to Joe Flat from White to Flacco, in my opinion. Like we saw the, the Jets move the ball and put up points early in the season with Flacco. Yes, Flacco is totally capable of torpedoing a bet on the Jets in any game. If he has one of those games where he's just going to throw three, four interceptions and be completely terrible gets sacked seven times um you know he can light your betting slip on fire single-handedly but i do think the jets should be favored by more than they're being favored right now i think we're seeing the lions get too much credit for beating the fraudulent vikings and there's that word again fraudulent mm -hmm. I, right, won't Denver say it, but i'm happy to one one quick <laughs> one quick thing here Kurt. to uh to counter fitz's point the injury situation with the jets it just it bears a little bit of watching so defensive tackle quinn and williams he's dealing with a calf injury i'm assuming he's probably fine but he is pretty important to what they're doing on the defensive mm -hmm. line and then this is a kind of underrated one but Corey davis left with a concussion and i'm kind of skeptical he's going to return and it's not that he on his own is all that important to the offense but when he's not there they shift Elijah Moore out and they so they don't use him in the slot. They use him more on the perimeter, which like that's not the best location for him. And then you have Braxton Berrios on the field. And so like right. an offense that doesn't function as well as it probably should to begin with is like incredibly suboptimal without Corey Davis there. Excellent point there on the Corey Davis injury. Uh, next one here. We don't have a line right now uh, on the Denver Broncos, Arizona Cardinals. So we can kind of skip over that right now. We do have the uncertainty of Russell Wilson. 39 is the over under on this one. We're still at the Cardinals yet to play. I want to skip ahead to the New England Patriots and the Las Vegas Raiders here. Uh, Las Vegas coming off a terrible loss to the Rams. They should have absolutely won that game. It was in their their sphere to beat Baker Mayfield and the Rams. He'd been there for two days. Uh, nonetheless, uh, this game is practically uh, to pick them too. They are one point favorites at home. 44 and a half is the number minus 110 on the money line for either team. This is another game fits. It's very close. It's very tight. Do you see any value here with this at all? I see value with the Patriots. I think there should be a pick them or maybe the Patriots as a small favorite. Um, the Raiders did circle the wagons after the bad loss to the Indianapolis Colts in week 10, and then they rattled off three straight wins. Can they circle the wagons again after an even worse loss to the Rams in a uh, you know ridiculous giveaway of a game? I'm not betting on it. I think maybe it'll be quitting time for the Raiders uh, after that one. And so, you know, like, a Bill Belichick team. They get stronger as the season goes on. And I, I know they're going to be on a short week after playing on Monday night. And I know it's a West Coast game for them and an East Coast team. Um, I do want to find out maybe before I put my money down on the Patriots, if they are in fact staying on the West Coast rather than, uh, you know, making the long cross country flight twice in a span of six days. But um, mm -hmm. I'm inclined to bet the Pats here. All right, Friedman, how about you? Uh, I see slight value on uh, the Raiders here, but I'm not betting it. And by slight, like, so the line's one, I have it at 1.75. Like, I, I'm just, 
I don't want any part of this game. This is totally disgusting. You have the Patriots to, to Fitz's point, you know, on the back-to-back road games on short rest. I imagine that they stay out on the West coast. You have the Raiders with, uh, you know, three extra days of rest. So like, I think there are a number of factors that kind of point towards the Raiders, but like, I don't want to touch this team. I, I said that after they lost to the Jeff Saturday Colts and I was like, I'm never betting on this team for the rest of the season. And then, you know, idiot that I am, I did it. And I'm just, I'm not doing it again. I want no part of this team. <laughs> Here we go. We're learning you're on the fly. Tennessee Titans are learning how to lose the last couple of weeks. The Chargers look much different with Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, both healthy in that line of Herbert slinging the ball over place. They are two and a half point favorites at home against the Titans. 46 and a half is the number in the over under plus 130 on the money line. Titans seem to be having uh, a lot of issues here uh, of late Friedman. To me, I'm actually looking at this number and I feel like this should be bigger that the Chargers should be favored by more after what I saw last night from them and what I've seen the last two weeks out of Tennessee. But what do you think? I have it right around where it is. I have it at 2.25. So, you know, I lean slightly towards the Titans, but, you know, there's a chance that I haven't adjusted enough given what we saw out of the Chargers. That's it. Like, I don't want to over adjust because they're still dealing with a number of significant defensive injuries. Sure. And I'm assuming that they get some of those guys back, but I, I haven't fully accounted that into my uh, my projections yet. But really, I have this basically where the market is. I just don't believe in the Titans' ability to stop anyone throwing the football on them. And that's very dangerous when you have a full complement of healthy wide receivers yeah. of that ilk. And that's why, I, uh, in my mind, you asked me, this number should be three and a half. Uh, so I'm on the Charger side, no doubt. Uh, where are you at right now in the early look ahead, Fitz? Yeah, Joe, uh, the Chargers playing with a full complement of wide receivers for the first time all season. And the Titans, bad time to be without Christian Fulton if he can't come back this week. Uh, and, you know, Danico Autry, their edge rusher, one of their edge rushers. Um, I was, uh, I had a first row seat on the Titans bandwagon for much of the year, but uh, they have slammed on the brakes and sent me crashing through the windshields the last couple of weeks. Um, like, now it seems like the Titans are getting too much respect with this line uh, being, you know, a field goal or less here. They've lost three straight and there was no shame in a four point loss to the Bengals uh, in Cincinnati. But then they got just completely crushed by the Eagles and then lost at home to the Jaguars by two touchdowns. Like maybe the season has taken a really bad turn here for the Titans. So um, I don't know, though. I'm, I'm not seeing much value okay. on either side or total for this one so yeah i think i'm gonna All walk right. away uh, perhaps the bengals will just put tom brady and the bucks out of their misery this week uh three and a half point home underdogs the bucks are and they should be uh cincinnati bengals uh looking good again joe burrow continues to you know just show why he is a special quarterback 42 and a half is the number plus 145 on the money line now cincinnati dealing with some injuries too Obviously, the T. Higgins injury, Tyler Boyd injury. So they are down some folks. They did get Joe Mixon back. Uh, but uh, Fitz, when you're looking ahead of this line here, the three and a half on Cincinnati, that feels about right. Do you see any value here early on on the 42 and a half or on the spread? A little bit of value on the uh, yeah. spread. Like I, I think the Bengals should maybe even be favored by four here. So uh, mm -hmm. I might take them. And I keep fruitlessly betting overs on Buccaneers games. And I don't know why. And like, Every time uh, it should be, let that be a lesson to you. I seem to get back on them and I'm looking at the Bengals and, you know, in their last stretch of eight games where they won seven of them and they've been terrific. They've been averaging 28.4 points a game over that stretch. The defense has not been lights out during that stretch where they've gone seven and one. They're giving up 22 points a game. So basically over 50 points on average in the last eight Bengals games. But man, the, the Bucs have scored more than 22 points once. No, they haven't scored more than 22 points since week four. And they've averaged wow. 15.8 points a game over their last nine. I mean, this offense is just like they can't do anything in the red zone if they happen to mm -hmm. get there. Um, no, they so, can't. That is very clear. Yeah, I'm just going to walk away from this total. Even though the Bengals are urging me to bet the over, I'm just going to like not keep betting on overs in Buccaneers games. That's fair enough. Friedman, do you feel the same way? 
I've I've been at three point seven five on the spread, but it's Bengals or nothing for me. Like I, there's no way I would be betting on the the Bucks in this spot, even though like the 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 trend the trend seer in me guys like oh Tom Brady off of a loss Tom Brady's an underdog Tom Brady but it's like I I don't want any part of I don't want any part of this this no. Buccaneers team. Uh, if um, you know if the over hits, it's because the Bengals score just a ton of points i don't think it has anything to do with the bucks scoring uh you know doing their own uh part to get the over here so (laughs) i would i would be taking if if you're interested in the over i would just be betting on the Bengals. the washington Commanders sunday night football four and a half point favorites over the new york giants 40 is the number plus 180 if you like the giants to win outright these teams are seven five and one the second time they played now in the last two weeks. Uh, Friedman, what are your thoughts on this uh, familiarity and the contempt between these two teams? I'm wrong. Uh, I'll just, I have it at, at two and a half, um, but I'm, I'm probably wrong here. <laughs> Fitz, I, would yeah. you like to add to that? <laughs> yeah, I'm on the other side and I have no more confidence. Like I think Washington mm-hmm. should be more like a, a five point, five. but I thought that last time too, I bet Washington when they played that tie, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, with the total right around 40 and them having tied 2020, the last time they played, I, I don't see any value on the total. I think it's about right. So uh, this is not a game I'm really interested in. I mean, well, it's going to be, not... a, it'll be a good game, but I'm not interested huh. in betting it. Sorry. Well, I don't know if you'll be interested in Monday night football then because the Los Angeles Rams at four and nine will take on the Green Bay Packers at five and eight. Another game that looks so good on the schedule back in August. Not so much now. Seven and a half point favor. So the Green Bay Packers are at home coming off a bye. 41 is the over under here. The Rams plus 275. Uh, Fitz, I'll start with you here with Green Bay. Uh, Obviously, this number makes sense, but is it a little too large here? Because I've seen that move from seven and a half to eight now in the last 24 hours. Seven and a half and eight are a little too small, I think, Joe. And it seems Ah. like it's giving the Rams too much credit. And you guys know I am not a Packers homer. And uh, they have been a a very mediocre team many times. I bet against them more than I bet on them this year. But um, a Southern California team going to Green Bay for a standalone night game in mid-December. It's going to be cold in Green Bay. Like, even if we get a... uh, and I gave Friedman the weather cast if forecast, if it's going to be 29 degrees here Sunday during the day in Chicago, it's going to be about 12 degrees up in green Bay on Sunday night for the Los Angeles Rams. So wow. yeah, uh, taking they shots, calling them soft. That's what you're doing. You're calling them soft here. We don't God. know if Aaron Donald's going to be back. Um, you know, just uh, like this is a good spot for the Packers here. I think they're going to win this Uh, game very comfortably. Friedman, all all the hand warmers are packed. The scarves are packed, the gloves, the whole thing. So do you think the Rams have any shot to cover this number? You want to let it get bigger and then bet the Rams? Because honestly, I'm going to, my argument on the other side is I've seen Aaron Rodgers play in these conditions last couple of years in the playoffs and he hasn't looked all that great either. (sighs) Old yeah. people don't like the cold. Trust me, I'm old. I don't like the cold. Yeah. Uh, okay. Again, uh, I've said it multiple times in the show. I'm I'm the moron who bet this when it was nine, because uh, it was nine in the look ahead market on on Thursday when the Rams played, and it's like, oh, the Rams are just going to get totally trucked. They're starting Baker Mayfield with two yeah. days uh, of preparation on the team. <laughs> just <laughs> just got it the playbook. So absurd. You keep saying it out loud. I keep saying it, and it sounds more absurd every time we say it. Yeah, I mean, so uh, it, this was eight, and now it's seven and a half. I don't think it gets to seven. Come on, if it gets to seven, too much Packers money will will come in, and I do think there is, you know, like quote unquote Packers money. Aaron Rodgers at home historically crushes. Aaron Rodgers, you know, like as a favorite, historically has done well. Aaron Rodgers off a of buy has been godlike, and you put all that together. Yeah, going against Baker Mayfield, who at this point will have extra rest, you know, going from Thursday to Monday. Uh, you know, if if he's uh if Baker Mayfield is that good, which is two days, imagine how good he is with 10 days. Uh, but uh, no, I have to be on the Packers in this spot. I have this projected at nine, uh, and that's even uh adjusting up the Rams after what they did last week. Actually, I have it at nine and a half. And I'm I'm assuming Aaron Donald doesn't play. I'm assuming like a lot of the injured guys for the Rams are just out. I'm projecting Joey P Monday night being bored and throwing 10 bucks on this game on the money line on the Rams just for 
S's and G's to watch the world burn. Yeah. That's what I predict. Uh, that'll do it for us here on The Look Ahead. Remember, go to bettingpros.com for more information, the prop bet cheat sheet, and all the tools you need to be successful in your wagering world. And don't forget also to subscribe to the Betting Pros YouTube channel because we're giving away that Isaiah McKenzie helmet. So go subscribe today. Click that bell to the goes ding and drop a comment in the YouTube comment section about how great the show is and how much you enjoy the show. And we enjoy you. We appreciate you watching us. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on. For Fitz and Friedman, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.